Hello and welcome to my video about the Panasonic DMR EH75V. This is an HDMI outputted VHS deck as well as a DVD recorder. There are two other formats that this particular unit supports. If I pull this door open down on the front, you'll see a selector for not only DVD and VHS, but it supports SD card playback as well as the hard drive that's built in. So it works kind of like a DVR. Now this machine did require some repair and I'll go over real quickly, briefly, what it took to fix it. It really wasn't that hard. It was a little complicated, but it wasn't that difficult. On top of that, there is a support for DVD RAM disks. Not sure if you've ever seen a DVD RAM disk. This is a DVD RAM cartridge. It is not a dual layer disk, but it is a dual sided disk cartridge. And this particular machine, as well as other Panasonic DVD recorders, supported the use of this particular cartridge. Now RAM, of course, stands for random access memory, which means you could just pop this in. You didn't really have to do anything else other than format it, but you didn't have to finalize the disc or prepare it for uh, playback elsewhere. It just works kind of like a big hard drive within a little cartridge, a little removable hard drive, we'll say. So that, the cartridge is one format, but you could also get the discs in just a loose disc format here as well. And you can see it has a very cool rainbowy gold design on there with those nifty lines and dots going everywhere. Kind of a cool thing. And we'll take a look at DVD RAM here as well. Also, you may have been on my Facebook page recently and saw that I posted a picture of this tape. This was a tape that you would receive with the purchase of two packs of Salem cigarettes, apparently in the 80s, and uh, yeah, you would get a free tape. So we're gonna pop this in and see what's on it. Very, very curious. I had never seen one of these before. I am not a smoker, was never a smoker. So uh, yeah, I would not have purchased two packs of cigarettes to get a VHS tape, but apparently someone else did. We're gonna take a look at that. So let's go over the controls here on the front real briefly. We see the eject button here in the top left, that's for VHS. Into the middle here, we have the open close button, that's for your DVD drive. Down at the bottom right here, we have this nifty little setup. It's kind of a circle of life sort of thing, where it allows you to copy from all these different sources to one another. So you can do hard drive to DVD, DVD to VHS, VHS to hard disk drive, and go in reverse, hard disk drive to VHS, VHS to DVD, and DVD to the hard drive. All kinds of fun going on right here. Next to that, the record button, play button, stop button. We have our drive select button here. We have our DV input. Now DV input would allow you to connect a, an older uh, high eight camera or mini DV camcorder and plug it into here and record digitally into this particular unit. To the left of that, we have our display, which displays all kinds of cool stuff. It has a tendency to say bye and please wait quite often. We have uh, a channel up and down going on here and a rewind and fast forward buttons there. We have our RCA inputs here for video, left and right audio, S video input, power, and that will pretty much cover all the controls on the front. Let's flip it around and look what's on the back. Going left to right, we have the AC input here, so you can remove the power cord and replace it with another one. Perhaps if the cat or dog eats your power cord, easily swap it out with another one. That was a Panasonic thing. Panasonic and Techniques did that a lot on all of their components. And yes, it is pronounced Techniques, not Technics. Uh, this is a cooling fan right here, which was quite dirty and required a, a bit of cleanup. Uh, this is your HDMI output, and we have a, a G-Link connector here, which apparently allowed you to connect this component to other components, and they could control one another. We have our component video output, as well as our optical digital output. We have a DVD VHS common out via RCA here, and a, a DVD priority out. So I would assume that if you hook this to your TV, the only thing you would see out of that output would be just DVD, and there's S-Video output there as well. Over here we have two inputs, both with S-Video inputs as well as RCA, and then we have N1 and N3. 
To the right of that is our VHF UHF antenna input. This unit does not have digital tuners in it. It only has analog tuners in it. So this must have been made prior to our digital television standard, at least here in the US. This is the amazing remote you would use to control this unit. I did have to obtain one of these remotes off of eBay because there are certain functions on here that even my Harmony remote did not know how to do. So for example, this direct navigator button, schedule functions, those types of buttons were not available for me, at least on my Harmony remote. I wonder if the engineers who originally produced VHS, I guess those guys at JVC, ever dreamed that one of their VCRs or some of their VCR technology would include computer equipment. Well, guess what? This VCR has a hard drive in it, a computer hard drive. Now, by today's standards, this computer hard drive is old. It's an IDE hard drive. You'll see it here. It's a Samsung 80 gigabyte IDE hard drive. And you can see it's just the standard connections that would have been in a computer that had an IDE hard drive. Here, IDE connector here, power cord connector here. The main symptom I had with this unit when I first brought it home was the hard drive was clicking on and off. And to me, it sounded like the hard drive was going out. So I thought, well, I guess I'm gonna have to replace the hard drive. But another main feature that kept happening at the time was that the unit would shut off after about five minutes. First, I couldn't even get it to power on. And then after I got it to power on and I could get a tape to play in the VCR section here, it wouldn't stay on. And it would just say bye and then turn off. Well, as it turns out, it needed capacitors. Isn't that shocking? So the best part about this machine needing capacitors is that it told me which ones I needed to replace. See those red ones in there and the ones that are not black? Those particular ones were swelling at the top. So all I did was take the numbers off the side and ordered them from mauser.com, got me my new caps, replaced them in there, and the unit started functioning again absolutely perfectly. And believe it or not, I did vacuum this unit out and cleaned it out, but boy, there's some stubborn dust in there. I also replaced this big old capacitor right here. He is a... 220 microfarad, 250 volt, and I don't know, I was like, I'm just gonna replace that one too. It wasn't swelling, but I went ahead and replaced it. So again, the power supply section here was what needed to be serviced, and it was really easy to work on. I took out all the screws, and I could see this, this particular DVD-ROM drive had to come out, and this entire motherboard, which takes up this section of the player, had to be removed and you know what it really wasn't too bad there's uh, these connectors that go across here that connect this board to that board those had to be unplugged but everything was really unscrew plug and play really wasn't too bad so again we've got our hard drive we've got our power section here and our mostly cleaned up cooling fan here is our vcr section here it's very efficient vcr section uh, super ultra mega fast rewind as well as mega fast scanning on playback. We'll show you that here shortly. But again, uh, not much to look at there. I mean, just the absolute getting rid of wires comparison to all the 80s VCRs that just have wires going everywhere inside of here. I mean, look, this is like the only visible wires here in this section here. We just got ribbon cables for all of that. Wires here for our hard drive. So uh, yeah, very, very cool setup on the inside. And uh, let's put a tape in and see what it looks like. When you first plug in the system, you will notice on the screen here, it's saying, please wait multiple times. It loves to say, please wait. I'm guessing it has an operating system. And so that operating system is booting in the background here, or at least getting itself prepped up for operation. Go ahead and put in our Salem branded tape. Look at that, Salem branded tape. That's the cigarette company that makes videotapes. Notice our direct drive. 
video head here with the coils for the direct drive and the ring magnet visible there. So once you put the tape in, it immediately threads it. Let's go ahead and rewind it. You can see we are at the end of this tape. There we go. Look at that. She's about to go into high gear. Pretty outstanding considering it's doing this while threaded to the uh, video head right there. Well, sounds like a siren. And she slows down so she doesn't rip the tape off the hub. Very kind of you, Mr. Panasonic. There's the leader tape in there. And there it goes uh, moving forward just a hair. And now we're ready to go. Let's take a look at the DVD side as well. So this would be our DVD drive. I'm gonna go ahead and change it from the drive select over to DVD so it will actually listen to me. Again, that's a feature I'm really not too fond of. I wish it would just like, as soon as you hit the open close button, switch over to that particular input. Uh, all right, so you can see this drive uh, tray here is a little bit different, a little bit wider. And as you'll see, our DVD RAM cartridge fits right there. As I close this drawer, watch this slide over. Now in preliminary testing, this machine did have a little bit of trouble with these DVD RAM disks. So my guess is some part of the unit is no longer functioning properly. But it makes some really interesting noises as it's trying to read the disk. So again, I'm not quite sure what is going on with DVD RAM. This unit does boast that it does DVD RAM. So I'm not sure why it's having such a problem with it, I guess due to age. Okay guys, as promised, I am going to play you this Salem cassette. Let's go ahead and throw it in there. Grab my remote. Let's see what mysteries live on this tape. So apparently we had a little bit of view of uh, Dick Clark there. And looks like it's... Uh, Whoever recorded this uh, couldn't figure out what they were doing. Got some uh, country stars on here. I'm not sure what's going on with the audio. Uh, the audio does work on this. Now, strangely enough, before I replaced the capacitors, I was not getting audio on this guy. Uh, let's do a little uh, fast forwarding here. Oh, looky there. Country Jam 94, yeehaw! But again, for some reason, there was a little bit of trouble with the audio on this tape. Video quality is pretty good.
So for whatever reason, uh, they recorded two hours of this uh, country western variety show, we'll call it. And that's what's on the tape. Wish I had something more exciting to show you, but that's it. Now, to demonstrate that there is actually working audio on this, I'll throw in this tape. This is uh, Reader's Digest, The Great Pyramids. Extraordinary Secrets of the Great Pyramids Unveiled. Been using this as a test tape. Narrated by Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock. And let's go ahead and put in a blank DVD. Have some here in my arsenal. I've got a Memorex DVD Plus R here, which is what this thing boasts that does. Looks like it does minus as well, but Let's go ahead and use a plus disc. We'll put that in and see what the unit says about it. It says it's reading the disc. Okay, I guess it's happy with that. Now let's go ahead and press the VHS to DVD option right here. Cannot copy. This is an unformatted disc. Please format the disc in DVD management. All right, so let's go set up. Let's go down to disk. EP, eight hour mode. Uh, able high speed mode on. Rapidity of high speed copying, top speed. Okay, return. And while we're in here, I'll just go ahead and show you the rest of these. So we've got our setup here, channel, setup, disc, video, audio, display, TV screen, and VHS. Let's return out of there. If I hit schedule on the remote, it brings us into this TV guide section here, which we won't go over because I don't think it's going to work without some analog channels having been discovered. Let's try Direct Navigator. That doesn't do anything. Functions. Let's see here. Other functions. Setup. Nope, that takes us back there. Okay, once again I got snagged because I did not put it on DVD first. So once I put it on DVD, this prompt comes up. This disc is not properly formatted. Do you want to format it? And I'm going to go and say yes. It brings me to here. Formatting is necessary to record on this disc. It will take approximately two minutes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. And now we are going to format the disc. Okay, it didn't quite take two minutes to do, but uh, okay. So we have a DVD management plus R, and we have free time of four hours at the LP mode. So now I can hit return. I can put in the disk name. I can make a top menu style. I can playback start at the first title if I'd like, and I can finalize the disk and make it playable on anyone's DVD player. All right, so let's get out of there again. Let's go back to VHS via the drive select here, and let's attempt to copy a copyrighted movie film over to DVD. Here we go. VHS to DVD would be this button right here. Press and hold the button for three seconds to start copying from VHS to DVD in LP mode. All right, three seconds. Do you want to finalize the disc after copying? Press record to start copying. The DVD will automatically be finalized. Press play to start copying without finalizing. Or press stop to cancel. All right, so let's hit play on the remote. Let's see how far we get. Before we unlock the future, we must find the keys to the past. Leonard Nimoy, join me. 
and open the door to ancient mystery beginning now. So apparently that works. Now I don't know if that particular VHS tape has uh, no copyright protection coding on it or what exactly happened. But uh, let's go back over to the DVD. And let's hit play and see what's on there. And again, it has recorded onto the DVD drive. All right, so let's try something else. How about we copy from VHS to the hard drive? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this button here. And I guess I have to hold it down for three seconds. There we go. While copying, you can play back a title recorded on the hard drive. Okay, that's weird. The pyramids, the great sphinx, the hieroglyphs, the mummies, and the poppies. Egypt. Oh wait, the papas. Sorry. A powerful ancient civilization flourished here and its people gave thanks to their many gods for their environment. Okay, I'm going to stop that. Now here's the, the interesting thing we haven't looked at yet, and that is looking at recordings from the hard drive. Hard drive is highlighted here. Now I'm going to go to Direct Navigator, and this will bring up, looky there. The pyramids. There's our VHS recording right there. The pyramids. The Great Sphinx. The hieroglyphs. The mummies. Okay, stop. Now I'm going to show you something else that is funny. So um, I recorded a DVD to this thing last night. It is this DVD music disc. It is Ambience Bird Song by Chip Davis by American Gramophone. This particular set has a DVD audio, DVD video, as well as a CD included in the kit. So there's a little bird song playback going on there. So there's recording from DVD. Uh, this person who owned this uh, had, <laughs> had, a, had their wedding video on here. So this is obviously... Isn't that just special? All right, and then it uh, looks like they recorded some TV on this as well. I thought it was interesting. There was um, the entire John Adams series. And in fact, they even had the making of the John Adams series. Looks like it was on HBO. Let's hit play on that. And action, everybody. Independence. A mean war from one end of the colonies to the other. I have no illusions about that. What our desire at HBO was always to do was to bring David's work to life in a way that was going to constantly surprise people. So uh, I've seen some of that series. It's really good if you haven't watched it. Uh, if you want to, you could just come over and borrow this particular machine and uh, watch it on this machine. So this is the direct navigator for the hard drive here. And again, uh, this is kind of a hodgepodge of different things that these people put on here, whoever had this before me. And uh, yeah, we even got some home videos of the kids, the kiddos. Petey. From 1995. Hey, what do you got to say? Peace. 
sign? Tell them what we found on the shore. We found turtle eggs. Uh huh. How come I can't focus here? Are you on auto focus? I don't know. You're focusing. Okay, Dan. Tell us about those turtle eggs. Okay, we are stuck. I was walking way up ahead of you. Two. What were we on, like a gravel bar or something? Yep, and there was um, insects all over it. What, uh -huh. are, what are they called? Uh, turtle eggs. Maggots? Maggots. Uh -huh. There were maggots. Out. What, what, was there like a depression in the gravel? Yeah. And then there were like eggs that were broken, like soft-shelled yep. eggs floating around. And then there were maggots around. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Looks like uh, Timmy from Jurassic Park. Andy, Andy, have you noticed those uh, bees in that uh, nitro cola? No. Uh, aren't there any bees in there? Yeah, there's one right on top of it. Wait, I can't see it. Wait, it's too close. You're too close. Hold still. Can we hear it buzzing? Objects in the mirror appear closer than they are. <laughs> I can't hear it. You know bees can see? We got bees right here in River City. Okay. Can you sleep yet? It's it. You huh? never ever try to drink this nitro cola. Why? I drunk this before. You did. And what happened? Nothing happened. No? Nothing happened. You didn't Nothing get hyper? Happened. Huh. My all was okay. I okay. See you you I survived? But I couldn't drink it. Where is Step Haney? Okay, for our final test, I'm going to attempt to copy a portion of This Is DVD a demonstration disc from Sony. You can see the entirety of this on my channel. I've tried copying this before on machines like this to VHS and it tells me it's a copyrighted disc and I can't do it. So let's give it a try here, see what happens on this machine. So I'm gonna go DVD to VHS. I don't know if you can see me doing that down at the bottom there. It may not have been visible before, but here it is down here at this button. So DVD to VHS, I'm just gonna hold that button down now it says to copy from this disk, use advanced copy from the functions menu. Okay, well that'll be different. Okay, I don't know what's uh, making this one so special. So let's go to the functions menu. Other functions, advanced copy. So we're gonna go VHS to Actually, wait a minute. The source is the DVD. The destination is VHS. Okay, we're gonna record it standard play. Time limit of two hours. And start copying. Here we go. Uh-oh, there it is. Cannot copy. This title is copy protected. Well, what a ya now. And this concludes our video about the Panasonic DMR EH75V with HDMI output for both VHS and DVD and everything else that this thing will output. So you can follow me on Facebook or if you have a question for me, that's the best place to ask it other than the comments down below. Please leave a comment below if you like this video and click that little like button if you happen to like this video. Also, it helps me out. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And you can follow me on Twitter, although I'm rarely ever there. And But I do have a page on Twitter. Uh, I am a Patreon uh, participant and I have some really faithful Patreon subscribers. Their names are down in the description below. Thank you guys. And please consider being a Patreon supporter and that helps me fund 
the purchase of cool old technology just like this and sometimes refurbishing the technology as well. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time for more Databits Retro Technology.